One of the most revered models in Seiko's history is the SKX, a watch that became a legend in the affordable dive watch space. But after two decades on the market, Seiko decided to finally discontinue the model a couple years ago. And shortly after its discontinuation, the anticipation of a successor increased. But instead of just giving us a true replacement, Seiko unveiled a new line of Seiko 5 sports models that strongly resembled the SKX case DNA. At the time, these were met with some mixed reviews, with many struggling to look past a case that reminded them of their fallen favorite. But with the dust settling a couple years later, I wanted to revisit this collection, looking at both a mass appealing variant and one that encroaches on a bit more of an unconventional take to identify their place within Seiko's collection and affordable watches entirely. Let's jump into it. All right guys, now before we look at these Seiko 5 watches, I do wanna mention that we've updated our best Seiko watches blog and guide. So that's gonna have over a hundred different variants and references on that list. It's been updated for 2021 as we're kind of going into 2022. So definitely check that out. Spent a good amount of time on that list. Link will be in the description down below. Now, before we get into the idea of the SKX, which I plan on discussing towards the end of the video, let's first speak to the realities of what these models are. Seiko 5 pieces. Although models that are classified as Seiko 5s rarely offer any professional specifications, they still present some of the most compelling value on the market. With the release of these pieces a couple years ago, they spanned 27 variants broken up into five categories, sports, suits, specialist, street, and sense, each visually designed and styled to a particular look and feel. Given their familiar case shape to the SKX, Quick points were made about them only being capable of 100 meters of water resistance, lacking a screw down crown, dropping the loom pip on the bezel, and foregoing the ISO certification required for an official dive watch status, despite there being upgrades when it came to the movement. All of these criticisms at the time seemed fair, but in a lot of ways they weren't, given that these watches were in no way intended to be professional dive watches. But before we get into that idea further, let's examine two different variants within this collection the more mass appealing SRPD-51, and the more aggressively styled SRPG-61. Starting with the less extreme of the two, the SRPD-51, the case and wearing experience is going to be uniform across all the members of the sports collection. We have a 42 and a half millimeter diameter offset by a 46 millimeter lug to lug dimension and 13 millimeters thick. These dimensions are a close approximation of the original SKX case and share the near universally favorable wearing experience offered by that iconic watch. Like other Seiko watches, the 42 and a half millimeter diameter wears smaller in practice thanks to the restrained lug to lug and the prominent bezel with its dark blue anodized aluminum insert, wearing closer to that of a 40 millimeter in actuality. In terms of finishing, the 51 demonstrates the traditional blend of brushing on the case top and polishing on the sculpted case sides, crown, bezel, and case back. The unsigned crown at four o'clock is push pull and along with the screw down case back, allows for this watch's capable 100 meters of water resistance, which is definitely suitable for 99.9% .9 of us. Set between the drilled 22 millimeter lugs, the watch leans into an oyster style bracelet with folded end links, is pin adjusted, and offers a simple stamp clasp. The bracelet feels its price a bit more than the rest of the watch, though it is perfectly serviceable considering this is a watch that's sub $300 and looks the part overall. Gazing through the flat Hardlex crystal, we take up a view of the 51's dark blue dial that exhibits a combination of a subtle glossy surface with a restrained sunburst effect, featuring applied hour markers, a day-date display, and hands familiar to enthusiasts from, of course, the SKX, but also many of the watch's predecessors throughout Seiko's diving history. Compared to the other Seiko 5 that we'll get into in a minute, the 51's polished surrounds on the indices and hands combined with the dark blue color scheme are subtle allowing for a high degree of legibility as well as a versatile look. As is almost always the case with Seiko, the loom is simply excellent, glowing bright green even after quick exposure to a light source. One other note in the display of these pieces is the way that the crystal is angled at its periphery, cutting at a stark degree near the bezel to create a reflective perimeter that makes these have a bit more of an elevated feel. 
But now that we've covered the major points of the SRPD 51, let's move over to a discussion highlighting the more extreme of the two watches here, an example of the spectrum available within the Seiko 5 collection with the SPRG61, a member of the more style focused street collection. Really taking the street idea to heart, the SRPG61 is one of two cement editions in the Seiko 5 collection, meant to evoke colors and textures of, well, cement. Starting with the case and the wearing experience, the SRPG61 maintains the same dimension set and case elements as the 51 that we just looked at, but with a few key differences. For one, the 61 makes use of a pull-through nylon NATO strap with blasted hardware to match the finishing. On the wrist, this feels like a high quality NATO and the gray colorway works well in matching the monochrome road inspired effect of the rest of the watch. Affecting the wear, however, is the fact that the nylon strap makes the watch sit substantially higher on the wrist, therefore having just a bit more presence than the 51 that we just looked at, in my opinion. In terms of the case finishing, this watch is uniformly executed with a matte blasted treatment that limits reflection while also offering a more casual look in keeping with the concrete theme. This finish technique is continued with the bezel insert and is paired with engraved markings that are harder to see in terms of contrast compared to the anodized aluminum insert, however, certainly matches the look. Like the 51, the watch leans into a flat hardlex that really allows the textured dial surface lying beneath to come to the forefront. It's interesting to see how the basic design, which is exactly the same here as the 51, can be manipulated to create a completely different effect. This primary dial surface is intended to look again like concrete, but also evokes some meteorite dial themes, exhibiting a non-uniform texture in a light gray matte color that plays well with the blasted surrounds of the indices in the hands. Even the Lumabrite used here has a bit of a gray tint, but still operates more or less like the typical Lumabrite, which is to say it works well, but perhaps not as good as the more traditional Lum used on the 51. Overall though, this road surface theme design from a distance simply looks like an all gray Seiko 5, but upon closer inspection, it reveals a wider variety of textures and shades that come together into a low key but fun package. But as we flip both of these watches over, we are met with one of their more important attributes as well as their common shared attribute, the movement, the 4R36. Despite the points of criticism some had of this new Seiko 5 collection when compared directly to the SKX, the inclusion of the 4R36 calibers is unquestionably a huge upgrade compared to the simpler, non-hacking, non-handwinding 7S26 caliber. Seiko's 4R36 is a solid modern caliber released in 2011 and offers hacking and handwinding as well as a stated accuracy of plus 45 seconds a day to minus 35 seconds a day. However, the majority of Seiko calibers outperform those specs by a wide margin in my own experience, with each of these watches actually keeping the time within a few seconds per day, or at least being in single digits. In terms of visuals, the 4R36 is on full display through each of the exhibition case backs, but offers little in way of movement decoration instead presenting a utilitarian overall look and feel that is in keeping with the positioning of the Seiko 5 collection as we are talking about sub $300 watches after all. But like the 7S26, these are robust movements that don't offer cheap thrills, but sustain reliability. They operate at 21,600 vibrations per hour, three hertz, feature hacking and hand winding, hacking stop in the second hand when you pull the crown to the farthest position, and have power reserves of 41 hours. But now with looking at these watches, let's talk about the general idea and concept around the title of this video as well as the intro, which is comparing these watches to the SKX. Now, the reason why I do that is because everybody else seemed to do that. And I almost just wanna break that down as kinda of not being truly fair. When these watches were released around the same time of the discontinuation of the SKX, it really set up an unfortunate situation for Seiko. They essentially used a case style and design that strongly resembled the SKX, but instead of really leaning into a professional dive watch, which the SKX was, they offered upgrades in some areas while maybe neglecting some others. But the important note here compared to looking at the SKX, and I think a lot of people are quick to just say that these are the uh, true successors to the SKX family, but I don't think that's the case at all. These are Seiko 5 watches, and judging these watches under any other microscope other than seeing them as Seiko 5 watches is, I think, a little bit off base. People are quick to just say, oh, it's not an SKX, these things have fallen off, Seiko's falling off, 
these aren't necessarily watches that I wanna look at. But if you actually look at the true delivered product, in a lot of ways, they're better than the SKX. Now the SKX delivers in some areas for a certain type of consumer where it's just going to make more sense. But the SKX is a 25 year old model. It's one that's been discontinued. The prices are going up. Even at the time of it being discontinued, it was nowhere near the value that it was when it first came on the market. And the lore around it was really just created by kind of more of a boom of the internet when Seiko wasn't really ready to take on the internet in any capacity, as that watch was never intended for most markets out there in which it actually ended up selling it. This led to unrealistic expectations, I think, for many people out there when it comes to Seiko, as well as probably the watch that was going to come and maybe really replace it. The thing is, I don't think the true watch to replace the SKX has been released. And I think there are going to be potential opportunities down the road for Seiko to do a true replacement. I would imagine that it's going to be priced in a range that probably some enthusiasts are gonna have a problem with, but that day will eventually come. But when it comes to these Seiko 5 watches, I think you just have to see them for what they are, Seiko 5 watches. Now they still have the same quirks and sometimes difficulties that come with looking at some Seiko 5 watches. Uh, one of these models did have some issues with the alignment of the chapter ring, which is unfortunate. But at the end of the day, I'm a big fan of both of these watches. And I'm a huge fan of this whole Seiko 5 Sports collection. I just think people have got it a little bit twisted when examining them and being a critic of them. They're not a member of the Prospects family. They're not professional dive watches. And I don't think they ever were trying to be. And when you look at it with that context, I think you get to see what these watches truly are. Good value packed watches for under $300 and should be on a short list for those that are considering a watch in this price range. But all right guys, I'd love to see your comments down below. What are your thoughts on these watches? Since the dust has settled since the release of these pieces, have you come to appreciate them a little bit more? I know I have. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Really would appreciate that as well. Also, teddybaldister.com, full authorized dealer of over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support. Also offer a full factory warranty for all the products we carry. Also offer price match. So if you see one of our watches for cheaper at another authorized dealer, fill out the form and we'll be in touch with you. And nine out of every $10 that we generate from our store goes right back into the content that we're creating helping to foster up a new generation of watch enthusiasts in the process. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.